I think we're live. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure. Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Uh, yes, I think we're live. So I'm going to go as if we're live and I'm going to say, first of all, good morning to my spirit guide, Greg, who, as you all know, is standing to my right side. I'm assuming you all know. And if you don't know now, you if you didn't know before, you know now. He's always to my right side. And uh, good morning to Chris, who is somewhere or another doing something busy, 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 taking care of people, I think, at the moment. And so good morning, Chris. And uh, good morning to all of you out there who have joined the show. Yes. So I hope that you notice. Wait a minute. I finally have my watch and my ring back which I left here the last time I was here. My, my daughter wanted to steal the ring. She covets the ring. Um, anyway, so uh, here I am and uh, here we are. And um, so, Chris, is there anybody there on this leap year moment, the 29th of February? There will be no, for those of you not sure, there'll be no 30th of February this year. Every however many years it is, we have leap year and it happens to be today's the day. So, uh, is there anybody there, Chris? There are, Rosemary. They're all starting to log on now. Good, good. So, um, now I know that you told me while we're waiting for people to log on, I know that you told me that your husband proposed to you on leap year. I think it's a really smart thing when people propose on leap year because you might be married 30 years and only have eight anniversaries or nine anniversaries or whatever that is. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a cheap way of celebrating marriage. <laughs> you want to look at it that way? Um, those of you who are sensible will actually tell your husbands, no, uh, we still have to have an anniversary. So it could be on the, whatever it is, the 28th or that's what I would do anyway. Um, and, uh, I would not miss an anniversary. I would not miss an opportunity to, I don't know, get a box of chocolates or taken out for a nice dinner or some romantic gesture. So I know that excuse me I'm, my my back is out so uh, isn't this wonderful so anyway so I'm, I'm feeling about here um so here's the thing um we did not do anything for valentine's day um but leap year can be uh one of those it can go over people's heads or it can be one of those really romantic uh things that happens because I think it's on a certain day, a woman can ask a man to marry them. I don't think that applies anymore. I think in Victorian times, the man had to ask the woman. It was very rare that a woman would ever dare to, or even be considered, they would be considered far too forward. But in the, this day and age, women can ask men, men can ask women, men can ask men, and women can ask women. So it's a, sort of, it's a whole different thing. But traditionally, the man asks the woman, uh, the woman waits with bated breath unless she's impatient and she kicks him and says, I'm asking you, whatever. Can anybody got any good stories about that? We are going to have a romantic morning um, I'm trying to think of the, one of the most romantic stories of my life. I'm desperately, desperately. Uh, you can see it's been a long time. I'm desperately trying to think of a really romantic, romantic uh, story. And I've got one for you. So, years ago, oh gosh, so many years ago, uh, with my first boyfriend, he was six years older than me. And six years when you're in your, uh, what would I be, eight, 18 or so, 17 or 18 or something, six years is, it seems to be a lot. It's a wide gap. Of course, as we get older, six years is nothing between two people. 
and um, he wanted to, um, I think, be look younger or be more modern for me. Not that I had ever, ever suggested that he should. Not that I had ever criticised how he looked because he was, without a doubt, the most handsome, handsome man. Tall, dark, 6'2 or something, dark hair, olive skin. Oh, my gosh. To die for. I had a major crush on him for a couple of years before we actually started going out. But, uh, but here, this is the romantic gesture and it's going to sound like a really really weird romantic gesture because it's not about flowers and hearts and stuff like that it's not about anything so here i am i'm young i'm 17 18 years old and uh, and here he is feeling 100 years older than i am um and he when I first met him, he didn't have a, any particular sense of how to dress. Not that he dressed badly, not that he dressed well. He just he just was an ordinary an ordinary guy. However, he d decided that he wanted to do something for me, so that I would I don't know like him more. He had this weird sense of wanting to impress me and to so he went to this particular store and this guy helped him and he ended up one day um coming coming out wearing a pair of we used to call them drain pipes uh very very tight very skinny 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 uh the pants trousers um now remember he was tall and slim and handsome and gorgeous and everything so anyway he wore these drain pipes a weird jacket and um he was obviously a bit embarrassed he was self-conscious let's say not embarrassed he was self-conscious but he had gone especially to uh to um buy clothes that he thought young people would wear and he looked awful and i did not have the heart to tell him but he just it just looked wrong um uh, so at some point i don't know how it came about he felt wrong in the clothes as well he didn't just didn't feel right at all it wasn't him so I said, why don't we go together and let's choose something together? And, uh, oh, and anyway, and he chose all the right things and he was, it, and it wasn't about buying expensive clothes. It wasn't about buying the best of anything. It was just about how he looked, how he wanted me to view him. And he just did that just for me it was something that he would have never ever ever considered doing for anyone and i think that even though it didn't work out it did work out in the end and um i'd like to think that uh, he's still with us i'd like to think he's listening to this show and wherever you are my darling john uh that was probably the most romantic thing i think i mean i've had flowers i've had chocolates i've had all those things i've been taken out and about and i'm sure if i thought really hard about it i could think of other romantic things but how nice that someone would actually and i have another romantic story i might tell you later from the same guy uh funnily enough who was absolutely lovely and uh, it's entirely my fault that we didn't uh, Mary, I, anyway, that's a whole, that's a story for a whole other time, but that's my romantic story. So Chris, I'm hoping that most people who are joining us have logged on now and have heard my, uh, story. I don't think I've ever, ever told that story to anyone before. And I don't think I've ever thought about it before. It just popped into my head. So how are we doing? What sort of questions have we got? What sort of comments do we have? 
and um, what do people have to say perhaps about their most romantic moments? Well, Lorraine says, my aunt married on the 28th. She was glad it wasn't the 29th. Loved the movie <laughs> Leap Year. Yeah. She travels to Ireland and wanted to propose to her boyfriend. Wow. Love that. Love it. Thank you for that. Keep going, Chris. All right. And then um, Alessandra says, hi, Rosemary. I hope I can make it. Hello from Italy. My granny read all of your books and she left them to me. So nice. What a nice gift. Have you read them yet? We don't know the answer. Okay. Um, I'm quite sure, Alessandra, what you mean by, I'm not, not sure I can make it, but you're doing fine so far. Did you read the books is what I want to know. Okay. Keep going, Chris. Wayne saying, good morning, Rosemary. Good morning, Wayne. It Am I going to get the job I just had an interview for? I don't know. What do you think I am? Psychic? Oh, <laughs> wait. Oh, yes, I might be. But I don't know. <laughs> well, then he also had the follow on. Am I going to get a partner soon? Oh, that's a definite. However, Wayne, here is the, the thing that I need to just mention to you my love you've got to be more open you've got to you know i think so many people here we are about romance again i think so many people are looking for that love at first sight or you know i like the look of this guy and 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 we we often and and the same for you know same for guys as well guys go for the you know what they consider is their type so what i'm going to say to all of you out there who are looking for love or wishing that you had a relationship cut out that this is my type thing cut out that i want to be attracted to someone find friendship with a person first love grows it really does but you know that instant wow and um, sometimes it really works out well and I, I knew a couple who had that instant and were married for the rest of their lives so I'm not saying it doesn't work out of course it does but very often it's the lust part once that's gone once that's finished there's you got you got nothing and you need to be able to in life have a partner who you can talk to who you can communicate with they can communicate with you who you can have fun with and i think that one of the most important things we need in any relationship whether it's friendship whether it's uh, romantic relationships uh brother sister mother whatever it is you need to be able to laugh and i think that if you can laugh with someone you can do so much more so just bear that in mind, Wayne. Okay, Chris. This is from Christian. Hi, Rosemary. Could Grey Eagle answer a question I care about? Will what? I, being a witness of a war in my country, thank you so much. I'm sorry, what's the question? Will I, being a witness of war in my country? Is is he asking? Will I be a witness of war? Or I can I can I'm only not, guess. I'm, not, I'm sure. not sure if this is an English or, is the first language. Um, I think because I don't quite understand your question. So, but I I do want to say something about it. I think we are all of us, wherever we are, we're witnessing wars sometimes on a daily basis those wars can be small but damaging they can be seemingly insignificant but damaging i think that when we witness 
which we all do, I think we have to be careful if we're witnessing unkindness or if we're witnessing meanness, if we can say something about it, I think we should stand up and say that wasn't really very nice. Always in a good way. But I think we all witness wars of different degrees. Um, I think that if you're asking me, will you witness a war? Because Yeah, if I if you're asking if I witness a war, I think you already are doing certainly the beginnings of, um, and um, you know that's terrible for everybody. Um, but you can only live in your own space unless you're a politician or unless you're a world leader. There's not a lot you can do about anything except be kind be good be gentle be fair as much as you can be um and um I, but i think you're already witnessing the beginnings of that's that's i think that's that yeah i'm checking with greg i think that's that's good all right the next question um is from leslie hi leslie I am I am patiently waiting for when the time is right for when Gray Eagle speaks. How does it work? Do we get to ask him questions? Oh, golly. Yes, actually, you do get to ask questions. Um, keep being patient. It is going to it is going to happen. I can assure you of that. Uh, but um, I, I have some issues to get, so I can't, Gregel Speaks, when we do Gregel Speaks, it usually lasts, I'm going to say, three at least three or four hours. I can't sit for that long right now. My little back is out. I think we have a disc out. We're working on it. It's getting better. Um, so, you know, just please be patient with me. But how does it work? Um what we like to do when we're planning this and we make a date for this then you have a, everybody who is going to join in uh they we everyone has an opportunity to put forward a question you're only allowed one question because there are, because there are a lot of people and so it's not fair for someone to have more than one question so we 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 generally limit to one question a person but yes you're allowed to ask a question now it doesn't mean that your question will be answered it depends on the time it depends on what else is being said it depends on what the theme of the of or the topic of, of the um, event is going to be um you have to remember with your questions to be really careful with your questions please don't make them trivial now what is trivial to one person is important to another so if it seems trivial to other people but is important to you and really important to you then by all means put that question forward but with we will be gray eagle is a highly evolved spiritual entity he's very wise his wisdom goes beyond anything that we could possibly i think understand even i am in awe of uh, the wisdom that he has and the wisdom that he's willing to impart to us um so when you're thinking when you're asking questions by all means ask the question but Think carefully, first of all, of the question you want to ask and also think carefully about how, you, how you're going to ask the question. It has to be put in a succinct way. Uh, we don't have to, you know, have to worry about do you mean this or do you mean that? So you have to put the question in a way that we have no doubt as to what question is you're asking. And then Greg will hopefully will answer as many questions as he's able to. Uh, I would like to hear from, if there is anybody listening today 
who has actually attended uh, one of our sessions with Grey Eagle, Grey Eagle Speaks, if they'd like to say uh, anything at all about their experience and what it was about. For myself, it's extremely profound. Uh, a lot of other people who uh, have been involved have been in awe of and have found his teachings and his wisdom uh, very, very inspiring and, again, profound. Um, but if there's anybody out there listening who has actually been present when Grey Eagle speaks, we'd love to hear from you. Chris. All right. You have a question from Arit, A-R-I-T. Rosemary, after our live with Manuela, I have you in my heart. Hug my husband, Fernando. I hope he still loves me. I was expecting a sign on my birthday. I asked for protection from my son who needs it so much. Sending a kiss. Oh, thank you, darling. Thank you. Um, yes, I do, re I do remember that. And uh, Manuela was great. And yes, uh, and happy birthday, Chris. Francesca says hello from Italy. Hi, Francesca. Uh, let's see. Lorraine says in the U.S., those pants were called stovepipes. Oh, really? Oh, <laughs> all right. Well, we call them drain pipes. And he looked awful in them, I have to tell you. <laughs> but um, what a romantic thing to do. I want to hear, did anybody do anything romantic for any of you? Uh, and if it's just a box of chocolates or some flowers, that's fine. But I am in a few minutes going to tell you another room. See, this guy, how did I let him go? Well, you know, these things happen. I was young. I was foolish. And and, uh, and uh, I could go on and on about this. But... Um, uh, anyway, uh, I'm going to tell you another, he was a very romantic guy, obviously, but he didn't seem to be on the surface, but his, you know, actions speak louder than words, but I'm going to, I'm going to tell you another romantic story, very, very cute romantic story that some of you may actually want to imitate when it comes to your being uh, romantic with someone you love. Chris, carry on. Gary says, good morning, Rosemary. And you morning. never told me that story. I never told anybody that story. I never thought about it until this morning. <laughs> Francesca says, can you message, can you have a message for me? Will I finally be happy? My response to you, Francesca, is this. Do you want to be? Do you truly want to be happy? And this is what I say to a lot of people because, you know, sorry, I've got to move myself a little bit here. Um, here's the thing. Uh, it's so easy to nitpick. It's so easy to criticize. It's so easy to forget how special that person is that we're with or if we meet someone or, or it's so easy to stop appreciating. Uh, it's so easy to moan and complain sometimes. And there are people who do that. Um, but the one thing I find in relationships that occurs again and again, and I always ask people who are struggling in these relationships, I always ask this question. Would you rather be right or would you rather be happy? Now, you would be amazed how many people will say, no, I'd rather be right. Well, more for you, because if you're never wrong, you're never happy. If you can't say, even if in your heart of hearts, you feel that you're right. If you can't say, well, maybe, I'm, maybe I am mistaken, or you know what? Um, you have your point of view and I have mine, but I appreciate your point of view and I'm paying attention to it and I'm listening and I'm going to try to do better. 
would you rather be right? Would you rather fight and say, no, uh, no, he did, no, that was wrong. No, he or she or whatever. No, they shouldn't have said that. And you might be right. That person may not have said or shouldn't have said or done a certain thing. But to keep going on about it, if you want to stay together, you have to let it go. And you have to just accept we're all human. We all make mistakes. And there's nothing wrong with second chances, you know. Third chances, fourth chances, no. But second chances, I think, you know, would you rather be right or would you rather be happy, Francesca? And if you would rather be right, forget your happiness. It will not come to you because nobody likes a know-it-all. And if you'd rather be right, that's exactly what you are. You're a person who just knows everything. You know that you're right. And uh, that would do it for me. That would be the That would be the end for me. I always like to think I'm right about lots of things but I am willing to say, maybe you have a point or yeah, maybe you, the way that you're thinking about it is different than the way I'm thinking about it. So maybe you are right or maybe we're both right. Or, hey, maybe I'm just plain wrong and I'm sorry, you know. So there you go. Chris. All right. This is from Annalie. Hello, Rosemary. Morning, have a Anna. warm greeting from Annalie and Francesco from Holland. Hi. Hi, hi, hi. <laughs> That's so nice. I love these warm, warm uh, hellos. Um, I'd love to know more about you guys. I want to hear more about what's going on with you. But I'm going to, because now I'm, now I'm, I'm going to insist, and you, you all know that those of you who have not been here before, I'll explain the rules. If you all stop talking or commenting or telling stories or asking questions or whatever it is you're doing, so will I. We'll cut the show short because what's the point? I'm not here just, just to entertain you guys. <laughs> I'm here to help, to guide, to hopefully to give some insight into things, a little bit of wisdom. But I'm also here to, to listen to you. And maybe, you know, it's amazing when you listen to other people, you know, people think I am so wise, but other people can say something sometimes and you, wow, you think what a wise thing to say or what an inspirational thing to say. So I'm always looking for other people to inspire me too. Romance. So here we go. Same guy, not wearing his drain pipes. I don't know that that had quite happened yet. I'm not sure. But anyway. It was our first Christmas and he'd invited me to go and be with him at his parents' house for some part of Christmas in the afternoon for, must have been Christmas tea or some such, where we were going to exchange gifts. Now, you know, I couldn't afford very much. I do know, I have to tell you, this is how unromantic I am in this instance because I can't actually remember oh yes I do remember look at that see I remember I gave him a black sweater it was a beautiful sweater it was a, something I probably couldn't afford and years and years I have a, another story which happened at least 20 25 nearly 30 years after he was married with his kids I was married with my daughter and somehow or another we got together I'll tell you that story another time as well it was a wonderful story it's a wonderful story and the first thing after all of those years that I asked him was do you remember the black sweater he said I still have it um, so anyway, moving back all these years, I'm a young woman, I gave him his sweater, he loved it, blah, 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 etc, etc. And he gave me, <coughs> excuse me, a very small box of chocolates in sort of like a little heart shape. Now, uh, if I told you I was not disappointed, I'd be lying. 
right? I would be lying because it did seem like it was a bit of a non gift, you know, anybody can buy anybody chocolates, you know, so so I was disappointed, but I said thank you very much. And I took the chocolates and I put them to one side. And they were all wrapped in cellophane, little bow on. It's a small box, but beautifully presented. I don't know if it was roses or Cadbury's or who, whatever. It was not a very fancy make. And I said, thank you. And I put them to one side and I was slightly disappointed, but it was fine. It was okay. And then he said to me, aren't you going to open them? And so I, and I said, no, I'll, I'll, I'll open them later. And he said, no, no. He said, I, th I think you should open them now. He said, I, I'd really like a chocolate. And I said to him, oh, buy your own then. <laughs> this is my gift for me. Um, so I don't want to open them yet. I'd rather wait. And he said, no, no, no. And he pushed the box of chocolates in my hand. And he said, really, really, I really need you to open them now. I had no idea what was going on. And as I've said, they were beautifully wrapped. There was cellophane. There was a ribbon. There was, it was a perfectly brand new box of chocolates. So I was talked into opening them and I wasn't particularly happy about opening them, but I opened them and, you know, and I pulled off the cellophane and the ribbon and then, you know, you open the box and then there's the thing inside on top of the chocolates and, and there's this, you know, box of chocolates and it looks like a perfectly ordinary box of chocolates. Um, so I so don't really look. And I offer him a chocolate because the only reason I'm opening these chocolates is because he wants a chocolate. So he says, no, no, no. He said, you, they're your chocolates. You have the first one. I said, I don't want a chocolate right now. But And the whole family was watching. His mother, his father, his brother, his sister, they're all watching. And I don't think they knew what was going on, but they were wondering what on earth is going on with this box of chocolates. So I took the top off and I looked inside again. And where the strawberry heart shape chocolate was, there was a beautiful gold pendant, heart shaped pendant which opened up and we put a picture inside and it was nestled within this box of chocolates how he ever got the, that thing in those chocolates and wrapped it back up and there wasn't a crease in the cellophane you could never you couldn't tell that they'd been opened but there it was and there it sat uh, just waiting for me and boy was I mean don't you agree that that was one of the most romantic things that anyone has before or since ever done for me? And I'll tell you another secret. Even though I don't wear it, I still have it and I treasure it. And I still have the picture inside of him as a young man. And then a picture of the two of us together on one side and him on the other side and uh, I bring it out every now and again and I treasure it. Oh, isn't love grand? We did really love each other. Isn't love grand? Chris, moving on, let's go on. Keep. Oh, going. come on. Nothing's going to top that for a minute. We need to soak that in. Did you like that? It's wonderful. I mean, how sort of my thoughts were how did he get the box put back together? Because once the cellophane's off, it's off. You can't, you know. It must have taken him ages to do it. And for him to just think about doing that was uh, just, well, I think it's called love, isn't it? Romance and love, and they're all wrapped up in one another. As I've said, never before or since 
has anything quite so romantic ever happened to me. Uh, moving on. And I want to hear about your romantic stuff. It is leap year. It is the day. There is no 30th coming. So come on, everybody. Help me out here. And, uh, and, and Gary, what's your most, most romantic thing that either you ever did or was done to you? All right. So this one's from Cheryl saying, good morning, Rosemary. Oh, hi, Cheryl. It's so good to see you. A few days ago, the light next to my bed flickered three times uh -oh. like it was about to die, uh -oh. but then it was fine. Was someone the, just getting my attention? The three-time rule, Sharon, you know all about it. That was the three-time rule, and absolutely. I hope you're doing everything that you were supposed to be doing. We haven't talked in a while because, well, you know, things happen. Uh, but anyway, uh, three-time rule, the three-time rule. So pay attention. Yes, of course, it was someone getting your attention. I think your parents are definitely around. Chris, keep going. All right. Alessandra answered the question. Um, she's the one who had the books from her grandmother. She said, reading the books made me feel my granny closer, not just her, but also another friend of mine who passed. I felt them closer. Oh, I'm so pleased. I'm so pleased. I'm so pleased. I'm so pleased. Is it Alexandra or Alessandro? Because if it's Alessandro, he's a he, and if it's an A, he's a she. <laughs> it's, an, it's an A. Okay. Oh, uh, how wonderful is that? How wonderful. Lorraine is asking, is the humidifier helping your cough? It seems that way. <laughs> no. No, it's not that kind of a cough. I've got some nasty, oh no. Let's not even talk about it. However, I don't know if you can hear my voice is a bit husky. So we're still working on it. But um, I have this inhaler. Uh, I've never, I don't take medicines. I'm not a, I'm not a person who ever, ever takes medicines. If I take an aspirin, you know that it's got to be, I've got to have a pretty bad headache. Um, but I'm taking this inhaler and it is helping. It isn't necessarily getting rid of what's there yet, but I have a, I think four more days to go on the inhaler. So I've been taking it for almost a month. <coughs> Excuse me. And then we're going to take a look and see what else we can do. But I'm in New York at the moment, so we can't do anything until I get back to Florida. And that's going to be fantastic fun because they're going to do a few more tests and things. And my hand is uh, still pretty bad. My thumb is completely misshapen anyway uh and i weirdly forgot my wrist strap so i'm in the process of waiting for another one to come uh but i'm i'm doing fine my back is actually improving and i tell you what happened with my back so uh, it just com i fell I, actually if you want to have i fell off the bed <laughs> I fell backwards off the bed, crashed onto the floor, and was sitting on the floor for four or five hours by myself because I couldn't move or do anything. Anyway, uh, with having said that, then my back went out and it's possibly a disc or what have you. And my daughter suggested a, a few days ago, why don't we go on YouTube and get some, see if we can get some exercises. So I've actually, over the last few days, religiously been doing these very gentle, very careful exercises, which seem to be improving the back issue a little bit. And also, during the course of these exercises, it was suggested that if you have problems with your bones or your knees or something you might be lacking in magnesium now you can't actually that there aren't any tests that i know of please tell me if i'm wrong but you 
just by taking a blood test, you can't tell if you're short of magnesium or not, but you need magnesium in the body for different things. So I started taking some magnesium. I'm trying to help myself. It's no point me telling all of you to help yourselves if I can't do it myself. So we're going to wait and see what happens. Um, but my grandson got a little nervous when he, because here's what happens. I, and the last thing I want to happen under any circumstance is that, you know, once you, like with my wrist and my hand and then they crippled my hand, um, once you start on that and you, you just, they give you pills and they give you different things and so on and I only took the pills for a short while and then have had these weird dreams and just have refused them so de deal with the pain and deal with the issues as much as I can but th this is what happens then they'll send you for an another test and then they'll send you for another test and then and, and they always find something or if they don't find something they send you for a test or something else and um, the, the one thing I refuse to do is to get on that hamster wheel you know you're on the wheel and you keep going and then they give you something else and then they try something else and they do a test for something else and something else and before you know it you're having um, symptoms from the medications that they're giving you and you know we all of us have to be very very careful and I get where doctors are coming from and we all know we need doctors don't we we wouldn't be without them and thank God for the good doctors that are around because they really do help us but if we are not careful we can get on the hamster's wheel and we'll try this and if that doesn't work we'll try this and then if that doesn't work well how about trying this and before you know it you're up to your ears or your neck at least in potions and situations and you're finding things about your body that you can perfectly well handle you don't necessarily need to do anything about them it's good to know what's going on with your body and it's good to have all of these tests but what i this is i'm only speaking for myself and i'm not suggesting that you do this but for myself i am against any unnecessary medication so my doctor and I have talked about it. She totally agrees with what I'm saying. She understands where I'm coming from. So, um, you know, so my grandson was got really nervous and I had to say to him, darling, I'm not dying. I'm not, well, we're all dying, are we? But slowly and surely. But I'm not, don't worry about it. I'm not coming to the end of everything. I've still got a lot of good years. And I think that our... Um, our attitude literally is everything so um, I think what we have to do is we have to help ourselves and we have to be circumspect in what the doctors tell us because we hear all of these horror stories and doctors as much as we like to think that they know everything they really really don't so be circumspect and be your own advocate in these things and just you know do what you need to do. My hand doctor thinks I'm not quite crazy, but he's of the opinion, go to see somebody who can help you with your pain. And, and, and my opinion is I'm not there yet. I'm dealing with the pain. I'm dealing, doing the exercises. I'm dealing with the pain and so on. And occasionally I'll deal with the pain, but I'm not going to pump myself full of different medications if I really can manage or without them so that's where I am that's enough of me for today uh, and that's enough of what's going on with me for today so I want to hear about all of you where are your romantic stories for me all right well Dean has a question about your consultations he's asking if one person has a consultation and their partner is with them does this confuse how answers come from the spirit world? Do some spirits break in to speak to the partner? Uh, no, it doesn't. <laughs> Dean, no. 
Um, the other day, I'll give you an example. So the other day, I was expecting um, this lady to come. I only knew that she was coming. And when it actually came to the moment, she had her mother with her and she also had a daughter with her. Now, her mother had her own questions. The daughter had her own questions. And of course, the person who brought the consultation had her questions. Um, but the truth of it is that the person who booked the consultation, some of her questions were about her mother and some were about her daughter. So it all worked out really perfectly well. Um, and there are times that, uh, especially if there are, you know, three or four people involved in, in the in the consultation, I suggest that they either extend the consultation. I always extend the consultation. I've never done an hour in my life. That doesn't mean I'm not going to in the future. I'm just saying. But, you know, I have, if I, if I know that there are, there are more people there, there are going to be more questions than we really sensibly have time for, they have to understand, you all have to understand, uh, my day is booked. Uh, I'm not just talking to you necessarily that day. I've got other people I'm talking to as well. So as much as, um, and I, I was, uh, I was um, saying to my, uh, my daughter just yesterday, uh, it makes me smile because people have their consultations and, and, and like it just for this week I can speak. They've been absolutely fabulous. People are so happy. I think people are surprised that they get so much more than they bargain for and can, they can see that <laughs> sometimes it's horrifying. I go, oh, really, they can see that. Oh my God. Can, and, but other times it's that they're delighted and most times people are delighted, but without exception, I would say when we're finished or when I think we're finished, then that person will say, can I, Rosemary, can I, can, can I just ask you one more question? And I smile to myself because there's always one more question. And so I answer that and then, you know, well, thank you very much. It's been great, Rosemary. And can, 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 I, can I just have one more question? Uh, and if you're not careful, that one more question turns into four or five more questions. And then I, then I have to say, okay, I'd love to talk to you. Because I do love what I do. I love to talk, I'd love to talk to you for another half hour. However, I got somebody else waiting uh, to have their experience. So I'm glad you've enjoyed the experience, but clear off, you know, go away, whatever. Is it confusing? No, no, not at all. Not at all. Remember that Grey Eagle is in charge of all of this and he absolutely knows, even before we begin, he knows who's going to be there. He knows who's going to be there in the spirit world. He's going to organize things so that they work out, and they generally do. Chris. This is from Allison. Hi, Rosemary. I first Hi. read one of your books 30 years ago and have recommended them regularly since. Oh, if you have any messages for me, that would be wonderful. Uh, well, I, th my message is thank you from the bottom of my heart that you're being a great advocate for me. I really appreciate it. I, funnily enough, I had a lady uh, <coughs> a couple of weeks ago who booked an appointment with me. And she said, before we even began the appointment, she said, I just want you to know that I've waited 28 years. <laughs> No, 20, I've waited 26 years to talk to you. And I started to laugh. And I said, why would you wait that long? She said, I don't really know, but I just felt it was time. So, you know, 26 years, 28 years, 30 years. I know there are people who've been following me for oh, lots of years, maybe even a hundred years. I'm getting, I'm getting up there, you know. Uh, anyway, um, my daughter had the absolute effrontery to look at me and say, well, you're old now. Oh. Old. No way. Of course I'm not old. No, she was laughing. She was joking. You're old. Well, what do you expect, mum? You're old now. 
think this was when my back really went out. What do you expect? You're old. My back's been going out since I was 19 years old and I had kidney surgery, two kidney surgeries. My back has been going out since then. Uh, but uh, age does play a part. But uh, I re I'm not going to grow old. I refuse. Not happening to me. Age is simply a state of mind. Oh, I'm still remembering that chocolate box. Move on, Chris. <laughs> Barbara says, at my amazing consultation with you in November, you reassured me that my husband was always near. But lately, I don't get signs or sense closeness. Is Don still with me? Do you still see him? Or has he moved on? I miss him. Silly, silly girl. You should know from what we talked about, he's never going to move on now. He will come and go. Uh, he's not going to be with you 24 seven. I'm sorry to tell you that, but he's not. But he's gonna visit you on a regular, according to Greg, or a regular weekly basis. He's not gone anywhere, but this is, I think this is what's happening. And this, and this is what happens to so many of us. And, and you've had a consultation, so you know how it works and you know how incredible it is to hear from your loved ones in the spirit world as clearly as we're able to do that. Um, and I think sometimes we, we move forward. We start to, because of what we've experienced and we feel comfortable and we know that they're there, we start to move forward. So we're not paying quite so, so much attention to them. We're not saying, for instance, where are you? Because you know where they are because they've told you where they are. They're right by your side. And it seems sometimes as if we've lost that communication, but I think it's just a normal growth process of you coming to terms with your grief. I know you don't want to do it. None of us wants to let go of our grief and you will always have that grief. You won't ever let go of it entirely, but you have a contentment in you, I think, that came from the consultation and you had an assurance and a reassurance that you know things were as they should be and that he's right believe you me right there with you i can tell you it tells me he's standing right behind me as i'm so he's right in your face and you sometimes don't see it because you have become more settled you found a little bit more peace and you're able to then let go and when we let go we don't we we often stop looking for the signs or we don't see them because we have a contentment within us and we don't need quite the same amount of of uh, evidence on a daily basis so, so don't listen darling he's going nowhere i think he told you this he's He's the one who's going to be there for you when it's your turn, which is in quite a while, I have to say. Keep going, Chris. Rhonda said she also had a consultation. Um, it's so filled. Lucy, I'll read it as she states. I have Rosemary is so filled with awe at his wisdom that I broke down in tears and cried the whole time. Gray Eagle gave me a message that I cherish. So that was about, she was at the, um, the last session. And then Cheryl oh, the, says. The Grey Eagle Speak session. Yeah. Um, oh, I, thank you. You know, people forget. Uh, I sometimes don't, don't know quite what's going on. And I love to hear these stories. And I love to hear how uh, profound the, these uh, sessions are for you. It just makes me want to get on with it and get another one going. Cheryl said, yes, I was at the Great Eagle session. It was so fascinating to watch him speak through you, Rosemary. I could have listened to his wisdom for days. It was amazing, but seemed to drain your energy. Um, well, yes, in a way. Uh, I mean, he uses me. He uses my physical body with my permission. He can do it anytime he likes. Uh, he's laughing at me, um, but it's you know it's a it's a three or four hour solid session. I think we 
we give a break in between if a pee break or go get a drink or something but you're there for that t- amount of time and you guys are listening and i am sure that people who are listening and people who are paying attention and watching what's going on i'm sure that at the end of it you might feel wowed awed elated but you also feel drained emotionally because it's a very emotional thing that happens and of course i uh, you know allowing gregel to i sort of step out of my body and then in he goes and i know it sounds doesn't it just sounds so weird don't you think uh, but this is what happens and um of course it's draining of course it's tiring i have to build my energy back up this is why i went with my healers with my students i say how important it is to not only give energy to other people not only to give healing to other people but to give healing to your own self and to give energy to your own self uh, otherwise you are completely drained forever and you you just you make yourself sick and we don't allow that of course yes i am drained but not in a bad way just i i like nothing more than to listen to a passage from my grandson of course i like nothing more than to listen to gregel no i like i really that's be serious i like i like nothing more than to listen to gregel and his wisdom i love the fact that he inspires people i love the fact that he is able to talk one on one sort of through me with those of those of you who join in the session i just i love the process i wish we could do it more if i had my way we do it every week um uh, it's an amazing thing so yes of course it drains me but i know how to recover i know how to feed myself and this is what we all have to learn to do we have to feed ourselves to give ourselves that energy that we require to keep moving forward <clears throat> keep going chris all right so we're right at time do you want one last question absolutely all right this is from fran bonjour de paris rosemary oh hello from paris i understand that perfectly how nice that you're calling from paris i was only thinking about paris the other day i was talking to my daughter about paris the other day it's an amazing and a fascinating city uh let's go do you have a question for me just a question if you please i lost my parents and since i'm asking myself if they could forgive me because i didn't want to understand that they were sick love you rosemary right i'm asking gray eagle this and i know that he has connection with your parents and i understand they were both sick at sort of not quite the same time it's almost the same time i'm hoping you're understanding this um so he, here is the message for you here's what we do as human beings very often when we are faced with the fact that we're losing those people who they I mean let's face it they've been there for all of your life you've never known a life without them that's the thing about parents isn't it we don't ever know a life without them um even if at some point some parents disappear on us uh unless they're not there when we're born we know them and we get to know them and 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 we love them but we just assume that they're going to be there forever and my daughter assumes I'm going to live until I'm 100 and something um my grandson especially since i've been dealing with stuff has been worried not that samantha has also been worried i shouldn't make i shouldn't make it sound that but facing the fact 
that your parents are sick and and you know and perhaps are on their on their you know their the last moment of their journey it's very very hard and very often what we do is we just bury our head in the sand because we do not want to face the truth of it and i think that this is what you did i think you buried your head in the sand nothing apparently they tell me nothing to forgive you for it's a human trait it happens um it's not about selfishness you are not a selfish person it's about not wanting to admit that you could lose them anytime soon and that's burying your head in the sand they were fine they understood they understand now and all they want for you my darling is to have a happy life to live a happy life and your dad says guilt free so that's what they want for you i think that that's a message that we should all take on board and learn from because sometimes we don't want to be aware of the things that are happening in our lives you know i can think of many times in my life when i've avoided situations because i didn't want to deal with them and i didn't want to believe that things were perhaps as bad as they might be or what have you anyway right well this is the end of the show so i'm going to say thank you all for joining me i can't sit in this chair very much longer so thank you all for joining me it's been great i hope you've had a, a really great time i will be here still in new york i don't know if i told you i'm in new york i'll still be in new york next week but the following week i will be back in uh florida and in the warm <laughs> i hope um, my grandson and this is the most fabulous thing of all my grandson is once again he played last year at carnegie hall once again on sunday he is playing uh, at carnegie hall on sunday afternoon if anybody's in new york and you want to get tickets or in around the new york area i think it starts around two-ish or something call carnegie hall ask them all about it you can buy tickets uh if you want to come people can just show up you don't have to be a family member but we're very very uh, excited and I'm just amazed at the talent of my grandson and I will share on uh, Instagram at some point I will share snippets of his playing he's amazing he is amazing he's placing play, playing Fantasia so he's uh, nervous excited an amazingly amazingly talented so that's what i'm going to be doing this weekend so until i see you all uh, next time please 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 have a very very blessed rest of the day and have a very blessed weekend everybody bye bye <laughs>